wisdom of the heart. Speaking on spiritual awakenings, mainly because often a spiritual awakening can appear to be a major life crisis. It can be a disruptor in your life. Whatever is occurring in the times when you are in your discomfort. Spiritual awakenings can look like dis-ease, your body failing you, your mind freaking out. See, emotions, energy and motion, are like waves and they are your inner guidance system to navigate in this body, this vessel, your vehicle, to navigate your vehicle through your experiences. Nothing ever happens to you. It always happens for you. And a spiritual awakening is essentially your soul is screaming. So a spiritual awakening is your soul screaming because you're not listening to the deep inner whispers because it speaks our language. We have five senses, but the problem is, is sometimes we're so connected, we're disconnected within. When you go without, hmm, you're missing all that's in. Everything you need is within you. And if you have ever denied, rejected, suppressed, ignored, instead of, hmm, listen, just deeply listen. Whenever we're seeking answers, wanting to understand, stand under, understand, whatever it is we're feeling, why is it we ask, we go without, we turn to another? Ah, what most people don't realize is as we speak things out, about 80% of what we say is meant for us to hear. Because most of the times, we are all channels for our own spirit, our own soul, to speak the language we should also understand and hear the truth within. We may say it outwardly, but we need to listen inwardly. So the next time you're speaking, especially with a friend or a confidant, and you're sharing your hurts, your desires, your pains, whatever you're reflecting upon outwardly, remember to listen innately, intuitively to your own voice. Because your own soul, your own ego, yourself, inner self, likes to hear the sound of your own voice. And if you're actually listening, you may learn about yourself. The reason we are in relation to another, we relate to another, is to relate to ourselves, to experience ourselves. Life is all about relationships. So how we relate to another is a reflection of how we relate to ourselves. And the wisdom of the heart is in recognizing, not denying, not rejecting, but listening to all the details, to the pauses between the inhale and the exhale, the listening and the speaking, the yin, the yang, the feminine, the masculine, the, the true, the false, the dualities, the contrasts. There's so much in the gray areas, in the shadow. The inner workings are inclusive of it all. A lot of times we hear this or that, but we don't hear what's going on in between. We're not listening to it all. And that's the wisdom of the heart, is in recognizing that energy and motion, emotions are like waves. We are 70% water, 
So of course we are affected because water is what holds vibration. Vibration, energy, frequency. We are magnets and what we attract is where we're at. So depending on your inner dialogue, your outer dialogue, whatever words you speak, whatever spells you cast, because you are wielding the tongue like a wand. And when you think or you speak, you are creating. Whether you like it or not, whether you're criticizing yourself or criticizing another, your body only hears and senses what is going on in energy. And your body is an instrument of the mind and it's always telling, it's always tattling, expressing exactly when it's out of alignment. So when the body is in dis-ease, discomfort, tension, stress, the hormones of stress, fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, trauma response. When you are in chronic stress, that's showing you're in chronic mental stress. When the body is breaking down, it's because the mind was already breaking down. When there's a disconnect between the mind, the body, the spirit, there's a disconnect with your soul. And that's the one thing we need, is the three, the Holy Trinity, to be whole. The true connection to ourself, our higher self, our soul, our beingness, is to connect the mind, the body, and the spirit, the breath. Meditation, reflection, listening, sensing, tapping into all five senses reconnects you to your intuition, your truth, your inner knowing. If you're willing to listen, listen without criticism, Criticism is what degenerates, rejects, depletes the life force. The more we breathe, the deeper we breathe, the more deeply we heal, the more deeply we reconnect and we remember. Perfect timing for Mercury retrograde. Putting the letters RE before everything you do. Don't start new, renew. Recreate yourself. Remember who you are. Reflect. Restore. Refresh. Again, wisdom of the heart. How connected are you? The heart and the lungs are in the same space. So when we talk about the heart chakra and we talk about opening up that heart space, we're talking about creating more space in our lungs so we can create more space for the air that we breathe. And the more you can replenish yourself and fill yourself with the prana, the life force, the more richly you will live in this life without force. Because the powers within and force is the opposer. Force is the appearance of having power. When you have to force something, then it doesn't come naturally. And what doesn't come naturally will fail. Power is something we all have within us. It is our God-given right. It is inalienable. Power is what you wield. But more often than not, we assume those that appear to have power, the ones with force, and sometimes we are deceived, influenced, to give that up and over to that other person, to, to give them relevance, to make them seem more important. And that, that's the Jedi mind trick. That's the bamboozle. It's not truth. It's not power. It's force. But if they can mesmerize you and cast a spell upon you to think that they do have it, then you also reinforce their ability to keep it and maintain it. Wisdom of the heart. The heart is the 
the language speaker, the communicator of the soul. It, to me, this is my personal intuitive sense, is the heart is what houses the soul because it's the purest and the most connected to your source self, which is your highest self, your source is your soul that connects to the higher spirit, the oneness, the wholeness that we all contribute to, the collective. A spiritual awakening can often be major life crisis and only you know what that feels like. And how many times have you been poked, provoked and knocked off what you thought was your best ride of life. Well, I thought everything was good, but was it? How many relationships have you been in that you weren't really quite that happy? And you kept thinking, oh, I don't like this and I don't like that. But it was comfortable and you stuck it out. And then that person, because you didn't cho choose to make a change, just comes over and just pulls the rug from underneath you and says, I'm not happy any longer. I just, I'm moving on. And then all of a sudden the ego gets involved and the ego's like, no, you can't break up with me. Now it becomes this challenge to the mind that says, I have to fight for this. We've all had something like this happen in our lives. And it's just a small example because ego is there to support and defend and it will fight for you, even if it's not life or death. But then there has to be this balance between the higher self and the ego. They both have to work together. There has to be a respect from the ego to the self and the self to recognize the ego. And the wisdom of the heart is, a, is knowing that you're no longer triggered and that you can accept and take personal accountability and responsibility for what resonates, speaks from, to your heart as opposed to the head where the ego is the strongest. The ego will fight over things to be right versus the heart that just simply wants to find happiness and the joy in every little thing and the play like a child, the inner child that says, life is simple. Show me nature, nature nurtures. Nature shows you the truth. If you need to be reminded, listen to the birds as they chirp, they sing. Listen to the wind as it blows and kisses your skin. The sun, it even shines, brightens your day, kisses your skin again. What does it take for us to wake up? It usually takes major life change. Something that even in our heart we knew, you really weren't that happy, but you were pushing through anyway. Or your body kept telling you something's uncomfortable. And all it was really trying to communicate was it was something you kept pushing through in your mind. And you lodged it in your body because it didn't align. See, again, kinesiology is the best test because you can't know your own mind except for through your body. And when your body is in pain or discomfort or tension, it's because you're holding on strictly, dogmatically to a belief, a story. You're not wanting to let go of something. You're so addicted and attached to something up in here that the body is holding on for you to remind you that it's probably not in your best interest. Anytime there's discomfort in the body is just showing you where you're out of alignment in your mind. And that's the wisdom of the heart in knowing that it's not part of the soul's path and journey.
we create so much harm to our own selves and we don't even realize it. We break our own hearts. We cause our own suffering because of the stories we keep on replaying like a record player. And we haven't even scratched the surface. Constantly peeling away the layers of our own onion. Yes, onions make you cry. That's how you cleanse your heart and your soul. And you don't know what you don't know. But when you know it, as they say, as Maya Angelou says, when you know better, you can do better. So trying not to beat yourself up in the course of life that when you finally have the epiphany like, oh my gosh, now I get it. It's okay. Or you see and you learn from your experiences and you want to rush out to help everybody else, but that lesson was for you. Just live your life the best you can do and allow others to witness it because as the lighthouse, you shine the light. And when you lead by example, you inspire others through your inspired living. Nobody needs to be told. This is the beauty of life, is that we all hear our, these beautiful expressions of the divine made in God's image. These individual expressions of God interacting with itself. Each one of us is playing a role, carefully orchestrated, dancing, walking, creating collectively. It's a collective collaboration. Life is art. We are all each other's medicine. And what you have is meant for someone else. And what someone else has is meant for you. We need each other. What if earth is actually the divine, is actually God? Wouldn't that be an epiphany? Wouldn't that be a crazy thought? That was something I sat with just earlier before I came on live. It's like, wow, that's a Jedi mind trick right there. All this time, nature is showing us through sacred geometry, the fractals, the, the energy, the vibration, the music, the elements, everything is God. Everything we are is it, is us is God, is divine. To divine, we are divine. And we are divine to divine. To deny God is to deny ourselves. To deny anyone else is also to deny God. Because if you can't see God in all, you can't see God at all. There's so much beauty to behold in this life. And again, a spiritual awakening. It isn't just that, oh, wow, aha. You know, it's not like all the angels singing from the the heavens going, oh, la, 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 presentation here. Oh, it's not all white lights and flashiness. It's not all like beauty. It's not all rainbows and butterflies. If it is for you, great. Sometimes when we're young, yes, that is what it is. It was for me when I was a little girl. But what I have come to find out that over the course of my life, because, you know, social conditioning and all this stuff creates layers, gives us all of this um, stuff to unlearn, programs us into the robots we become to unlearn later, Because I believe we have many spiritual awakenings, many wake-up calls as one would call them. Maybe even some would call them midlife crises. Because the reality is anything that's waking you up is shaking you up and breaking up the old crap that wasn't serving you. These are many spiritual awakenings. We just give them different names. Just like shadow work could also be called the dark night of the soul. 
But again, it's all part of your spiritual path. It's all part of your awakening. It's all part of your getting to know you, reawakening, remembering the soul within you. Are you getting it yet? Is it is it making sense to you? Let me know in the comments. Let me know. Does this resonate? Have you experienced this? Not just once, not just twice, probably multiple times in your life. Life presents us so many opportunities to grow and evolve. It doesn't just happen once or twice. It's not like you had a kundalini awakening here and then over there, you know, I never had one again. There's so many ways that people have these labels. But the truth is, we're always going through life like a roller coaster ride. We have highs and we have lows. We dip and we go. We flow. We dance. We walk. We run. We're constantly relearning something about ourselves. And again, life is like relationships. It's all about relationships. How we relate to another is how we relate to ourselves. And this is how we learn about who we are through another. Because we can't actually experience ourselves. We have to have another to bounce back and reflect it upon us. To mirror back to us. Oh, but most of the times, me, most people out there are going to say, Oh, you know, that person, I, they didn't necessarily... They rubbed me the wrong way. No, they rubbed that part of you about you that you didn't want to confront. So if someone is showing you an aspect that makes you go in a cringe, like, or triggers you, that's your work to do. That's what you're supposed to see as you. It isn't about them. Because when you're pointing a finger out, you got three pointing back. That's a loaded gun, baby. Be careful with your point of finger. Because it will ricochet back, not just once, but three times. Been there, done that, probably going to do it at some point in my life. It's the past, the present, and the future pointing right back at you. Everybody in your life is a mirror to you, is helping you grow, is helping you evolve. The wisdom of the heart is in recognizing that. It's neutral. The wisdom of the heart because as we grow older, we become wiser, is we see everything as a learning opportunity. We don't play the victim. No, we are empowered at this point. Because when we claim responsibility over our lives, as opposed to disempower ourselves and say somebody else did it to us, that's that in itself, anytime we play the victim saying they did it to us, that is a victimhood role. You may not like it, but it's truth. But when you claim ownership, you take personal responsibility and you are accountable, that's integrity, baby. And that is your heart saying, okay, I'm an adult. I'm a wise soul. That shit's mine too. I'm going to own it. Because when I claim it, I own it. Nobody can hold it against me. The stronger your knowing in you, the stronger, more intuitive, you're knowing of others. You're discerning. You're learning to discern that when you encounter someone, nine times out of ten, you're going to recognize them as yourself. See the other as you. It's one of the many sutras in Kundalini Yoga, but it is the truth. There's truth in knowing that each and every one of us is a reflection of the other. So recognize the other as you. And you will never be disappointed. And you will find compassion. When you find compassion for yourself, you can find compassion for another. If you still have disdain, hypercritical of yourself, then you will find it for others. And that in itself, when you are talking smack, trash on someone else is a deep reflection on the stuff you're talking about yourself. And the unfortunate thing is, is some people still like gossip. Gossip in the sense that it's harmful to yourself, but harmful to others, especially. Because when we talk about somebody else in a negative, attacking manner, 
Our body registers that. And you can say whatever you want to say. You can think whatever you want to think. But that's energy that you're giving over. That's energy that's taking away from you, that disempowers you. This is how we fragment ourselves. And when we are in a space of criticism of ourselves or another, we're scattering our energy. Our heart is hurt. Our soul is depleted when we do that. That judgment against another or ourself is a harm, is a self-inflicted harm. Whether it goes out or it goes in, it's, it's still in you. When you really sit with that and you catch yourself having or harboring ill will toward another, remember that, that the ill will you harbor toward another is the ill will you harbor toward yourself. You're not going to get away scot-free thinking against another because in some way, shape, or form, that's a mental construct, not a heart construct. That's the difference between the wisdom of the heart and the ego mind. When it's a mental construct, that's what when it fragments you. That's when it takes away and depletes from your heart and your soul, your spirit. Again, the heart and the spirit reside in the same heart chakra. The same space where you take a nice deep breath houses your lungs, houses your heart. Which is why if you are someone who has heart problems, breast issues, this is deep grief, sadness, because it's depleting you of your life force, your prana. The central heart that pumps the blood throughout your entire body, that's your circulatory system. This is your lungs and how you are oxygenated throughout your entire body. This is pumping everything throughout you in every cell and organ of your body. If you are depleting and harming yourself, the grief could be the loss of your power. The grief can also be the giving away to another, playing the victim. These aren't small lessons, and I don't expect everybody to understand every little detail that I'm saying in this evening. Because this is something that is just... You, you either get it or you don't, or but you will eventually at some point in your life. That when we start tapping into the wisdom of our body and the wisdom of our heart, nothing is separate. And that when it originates in the mind, because everything originates in the mind, the story is what creates the cyclical cycle in your life. Attractor. You are an attractor. The biggest attractor is your heart because that's the magnetic field. That is the heart rate resonance. You know, we radiate out from our heart. Your aura. This is your central toroidal heart. We attract where we're at. So if we are in low vibrations and low energy and we're thinking bad thoughts or, you know, I don't even want to put the word bad on it, but we're harboring ill will or we're holding a grudge, that registers in your body and it weakens your vibration. If you are in the fear state, we could talk about the levels of consciousness. We could talk about... Yeah, the levels of consciousness on the scale with, by David R. Hawkins. We could talk about those. And even below, fear is shame and guilt. And you don't feel worthy of yourself and you, you're ashamed. Those vibrations are what keep you low and weaken your immune system, weaken your heart, weaken your pranic body, your nervous system. Everything gets depleted. If anything, we should be working on the breath most importantly. Because when you work on your breathing, you enrich yourself 
through long deep breathing or left nostril breathing to calm and claim a crazy mind or counting on the inhale for four, holding for seven and exhaling for eight, you can calm yourself and claim yourself. Or even Sitali Pranayam, which is one of my all-time favorites, which is where you make a taco tongue. Inhale long, slow, and deep through your tongue like a straw. If you can't do that, because you can't genetically curl your tongue, you breathe over as if you're sipping through a straw. And then exhale out the nose. This is a really good deep healer in your physical body. There's so many different tools through breathing that we can calm ourselves and claim ourselves to return from the sympathetic fight, flight, freeze, or fawn nervous system that is all about being in stress response, you know, getting ready to, you know, save ourselves from the cyber tooth tiger, saber tooth tiger. Or bringing it back into the parasympathetic, which is the calm. We don't want to go without. We want to go within. This is our temple. This is what we need to take care of, to honor, to revere, to treat like a temple that houses this divine soul of yours. The wisdom of the heart is in knowing that everything's going to be okay. You will be okay if you trust in yourself. When you trust in yourself, you trust in your body. Delight in your body. Delight in your senses. Allow yourself to have fun. The more serious you are, you're also depleting your whole purpose in this life is to come here to have fun, to reawaken that child within because there's wisdom in the inner child and there's fun and joy and play. I believe we used to be this way long before, even in our past. I believe that was probably the secret of our ancestors, the lost history his story. Hmm. Something in my heart tells me there's more. And that I need to explore. I hope this spoke to your heart because it came from mine for yours. So much love, many blessings. Sweet dreams and good night.